Welcome back to the Global Goals Studio. In a year that was already too much, 2020 was particularly difficult for working women with four times as many women as men leaving the workforce as a result of the pandemic. To discuss what steps must be taken to advance gender equity in the workplace, we are extremely fortunate and grateful to be joined today by Sarah Kate Ellis, President and CEO of GLAAD, and Megan Rapino herself, soccer champion and activist. Uh, and to moderate this discussion on gender equity in the workplace is my friend Linda Pizzuti Henry, CEO of Boston Globe Media Partners. Welcome, Linda, and over to you. Thanks, Richard. We have a fantastic panel today and so much to talk about. My first question is for you, Megan. Um, given what we know about the impact that the pandemic has had on women in the workplace, how has the importance of closing the gender pay gap increased? You've been so vocal on this. I mean, I think one of the big, biggest things that we realized was just how precarious the progress that we have made is. Um, you know, the minute the pandemic hurt uh, and hit, obviously all the job numbers are coming out. There was a, a wild stat at the end of 2020 where all of the jobs lost were lost to women. Um, and just further underscores the need, not only um, for investing in women, but really like doubling down. I think the idea of over investing in underserved communities across the board, but when we talk about women, it has to look different. Um, clearly, we haven't done enough to safeguard women in the workplace, um, you know, not just from a global pandemic, but something, uh, you know, something less egregious as well. So I think we have a lot of work left to do. I think we need to reimagine the way that we imagine women in the workplace. Um, it needs to look different. It needs to be more accommodating um, to the specific set of uh, needs that women have. Maybe that's more flexibility in the workplace. Maybe that's childcare in the workplace. Maybe that's maternity leave. But overall valuing the different things that women can bring to the workplace. Um, because again, we're, we're just seeing that it, it's such a precarious situation that that we're in and all the progress that we've made over all these years is still, um, you know, lacking in so many mm. ways. Sarah, that, so the, Sarah, I'm sorry, Sarah Kate, what changes would you like to see after the pandemic in the workplace, sort of following along with what Megan was just talking about? Yeah, I think that we have to start with a brand new canvas, um, but with a lot of history and learnings and, de and, and, and centuries worth of learnings of the workforce and how we have to reimagine and recreate it. Uh, we cannot go back to the way that it was. And we certainly, I cannot um, say it enough that I can't have CEOs all of a sudden demanding everybody, especially women back in the workforce full time. And I'm, I'm hopeful that they had a, a peek into what it's like to be um, potentially the, the, the lead parent in a family um, and working full time when they were hauled up in their own homes during this pandemic. And so I think that there's a lot of learning, a lot of empathy, I'm hoping that's come out of this pandemic and that we need to readjust the way that we've built this systemically. This is not just a, oh, now you can work one day from home situation. This is a systemic issue that has to be addressed at a global level in order for us to create the workforce of tomorrow. And quite honestly, for employees, employers to attract the next generation. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, when you, we, when you talk about generations and the different needs of different generations um, of workers and particularly of women, it's it's a really interesting problem. And so I appreciate that both of you are really helping to push this conversation now because it's if we're hopefully opening up in a few months, but nobody knows what to do. You know, it's it's I don't I don't blame business leaders, right? It's it's a conversation that there isn't really a blueprint here, but it's such a great opportunity. What else are you hoping for? I think for me, what I what I hope people take out of this is that the existing blueprint does not work. And frankly, it hasn't worked for a long time. And I think women have had to try to, you know, gymnastics themselves into these workplaces or into, um, you know, a specific set of standards or rules. And I hope that we can all take from the C-suite level um, to the working woman this opportunity to really 
um, completely reimagine, readjust, rebuild, or build again something that does take our full selves and our full needs into account so that we can give our full selves. I think that is what's missed a little bit is that there's a huge portion of creativity, productivity, um, profit, frankly, for businesses that we're just leaving on the table because we refuse to create a system that takes into account a full woman. Really great conversation. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk about intersectionality here in the Global Goals Studio. Thank you.